Welcome to this breaking news flash on I-24 News. I'm Caleb and David. After some 50 terrorist attacks in the last two years emanating from Jenin, the Israel Defense Forces and Shin Bet Internal Security Agency launched a wider scale operation overnight in that northern West Bank city targeting terror cells and infrastructure. Now, following multiple airstrikes from helicopters and drones, more than 1,000 soldiers from the IDF ground forces and elite units uh, converged on the Janine refugee camp starting around 1 a.m. this morning, focusing on a site in the camp serving as headquarters of the Janine Battalion Terror Group, said to serve as a shelter for wanted terrorists. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant in his first comment saying, quote, against terrorism, we will take an offensive and proactive approach. Anyone who harms the citizens of Israel will pay a heavy price. Palestinian Health Service is reporting at least three dead and 27 wounded, most of them seriously, so far. IDF sources telling I-24 News the operation could last up to 48 hours if needed. A joint statement released by Palestinian militant factions saying, quote, continuation of the aggression will determine the nature of the response. Well, joining me in the studio, we have reserves IDF Colonel Alon Eviatar, a former Pal a Palestinian affairs expert and former advisor to the IDF's Kogat, and uh, our Bacha Leventhal international political affairs correspondent. For first, let's jump to the West Bank and speak with our defense correspondent, Jonathan Regev, who is at the Salem checkpoint in the West Bank. And Jonathan, we've been talking for weeks, if not months, about whether the IDF is going to take a, uh, a more serious extended operation in Janine. This is it. What is the scope of this operation? It's, it's, a, it's a very big operation. The, the, the scope is big, and, and we see attack by drones and uh, larger forces, uh, the scope of a battalion or so, on converging on the Janine refugee camp. We have to say that at the moment, uh, most of these uh, forces are still not deep inside uh, the Janine refugee camp, but just outside with uh, small incursions into the camp. The aim here is not to conquer Janine. If anyone thinks we're back in 2002 in Operation uh, a defensive shield when uh, the IDF forces uh, conquered uh, the city of Janine, the Janine refugee camp and other cities across the West Bank. This is not the case. This is not the aim. The aim here is to locate specific uh, places used to uh, uh, prepare uh, explosive devices and uh, perhaps rocket launchers within Janine target and destroy those places. This is the aim here, and that this is why we're not seeing a major entrance into a Janine, not even into the refugee camp, and certainly not into other places. The aim here is to have proper good intelligence into these specific locations. Some of them were already targeted from the air earlier in the morning, and uh, these forces converging in Janine, every time there's intelligence regarding one of these uh, uh, places where these uh, devices are being made, where the low rocket launchers are being made, uh, forces come in and destroy them. Uh, there's no aim to conquer anything. Uh, this according to the IDF. Don't expect any of that action. Not in this operation. All uh, right, but how long, uh, again, uh, what do we expect uh, for the IDF to be, uh, how long we expect them to be in that refugee camp, perhaps, and what kind of response from the Palestinians? The, the the plan is to be uh, to act around the refugee camp for 24 to 48 hours. This is uh, the plan of uh, the IDF. But uh, with uh, as as with any operation, you know how it begins. You know what is the plan, but you never really know what will happen on the ground. We're not hearing of a lot of uh, gun battle between IDF forces and Palestinian militants, simply because uh, uh, the, uh, the forces have not entered deep into the refugee camp. Uh, that is why we're seeing extensive use of drones, for example, which we've not seen in the West Bank before. Once there's the intelligence regarding a location of a, a, one of those laboratories, it is targeted from the air, not putting the forces on the ground in uh, any danger. Once the forces will go in further in, then I think we can expect some kind of an escalation. All right, we're seeing some live photos from Janine there, burning uh, plumes of uh, black smoke, though that could be the burning, for example, of tires in the streets. Jonathan Regev at the Salem checkpoint. Thank you for that. And alone, how do we characterize this operation? It doesn't have a name yet. Not a, it's not a, uh, a major incursion, but definitely the most, most serious one we've seen in years into Janine. Yes, sure. Uh, so far, 20 years from the uh, last operation, military operation, wide, in, during the Second Intifada, uh, till those days, 
Uh, I think this is the biggest uh, military operation, but the, the, the question if we name it as operation or not, it's, it's not just uh, semantic, it's not sure. just uh, uh, defined. It's also a kind of, I would say, message to the uh, international community, to the uh, White House, and even to the uh, PA uh, authority. We mean, as Israeli government, to uh, work over there, to uh, send our forces just to, uh, I would say, a short time uh, uh, efforts, uh, concentration, uh, uh, sorry, and, and not more of that. Uh, something to, to be focused, to be limit, uh, to make it for, uh, let's say, two or three days, not more of that, focus in the uh, refugee camp of Jenin, not to the city of Jenin, not uh, to the other uh, areas, and uh, just to uh, fight the terror infrastructure, uh, those uh, armed militias, the terror organizations, uh, laborators of uh, production of uh, explosives, and that's all. Right. Not heat, not damage, not wide uh, casualties, you know, many casualties and so on. This is the reason for the uh, uh, the uh, name or the lack name, of a name. Not <laughs> lack of name, but uh, uh, it's it's something deeply. You know, I think that um, the most important thing for the Israeli side is to decrease decrease by far in significant uh, way, significant steps, decrease the highest of the terror, the level of the terror, which came out from uh, the refugee camp of Jenin especially, for two years, you right, if you want. And, and especially in the last month even, we've seen the use of rockets or developing use of rockets, of course, this is, roadside explosives, which is yes. a, an escalation. Yes, I, I, I think that the problem is what will be uh, the day after. Hmm. You know, the uh, short term of the operation, the military operation, is uh, focused and clear and obvious to the uh, uh, um, military uh, forces like commando as, and, and, and the agencies, uh, the Shabak and so on. But what will be during the next um, weekend, if you want, and after that, what will be about with the uh, uh, security apparatuses of the PA over there, lack of uh, presence, lack of existence over there, yes or not, this is the question. Because, you know, the IDF and so far uh, the, the Israeli government uh, doesn't want to occupy this right. terror, this uh, area and to go back to, be, to control area A, it's belong to the PA. What will be in the day after? I think this is an open question. I'm, I will not, um, I would say I'm realistic. Right. Uh, I'm not optimistic about that, about the role of the PA uh, headquarters right. well, we'll, over we'll there. We'll talk about that more, yeah. about you, but the question is whether this operation will satisfy the political calls, so even with, with, especially within the government, for some kind of major strike against terrorism in the West Bank. It definitely answers the call that so many in Benjamin Netanyahu's hardline government have been calling for for weeks. We have to talk about the fact that, yes, this is an incredibly rare strike within the West Bank, within Jenin, something that we haven't seen in years years, um, as Alon mentioned, almost 20 years, but it is very important to mention that this didn't just come out of thin air. This came from a massive backstory of a huge um, counter-terrorism operation of where we've seen so many, I think you mentioned over 50 in the last couple of years, in the last two years, of these attacks coming and emanating from Janine, it's the IDF is very focused on making sure that it's targeting specific arms depots, weapon houses, but also safe spaces where a lot of terrorists, both in the West Bank and operating elsewhere, um, not just in Janine, are harboring there and at least finding a safe space for them to harbor there. The IDF is making very clear this is the target of the operation. It should not extend further, but as Alon mentioned, it's going to be interesting to see what unfolds because it's not just the targeted. Um, um, operation within Janine, it's going to be the circumstances that follow that, whether or not we're expecting to have rockets coming from the south, how exactly the PA is going to play into this, even though we've been told right. that they are not going to be involved. It's very up in the air. All right. I just want to uh, update uh, Palestinian Health Services now saying uh, at least uh, four uh, Palestinians have been killed so far in Janine, and as I said, 27, uh, at least 27 wounded, most of them apparently seriously alone. Eviatar, Bach 11th, 